Today, I'm gonna show you how to use ZBrush and Rhino together. So, stay on this video. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use Rhino and ZBrush together to create your models. So let's get started. All right, so right here, uh, I'm gonna go to my computer and I already have a model that I made, it, which is a ring, because I make jewelry. So what I do is I create like the basics of my model and kind of like the measurements that I need. And for this model, um, I'll tell you real quick the measurements of it, which is uh, about, I think it was 30, yeah, 32. It was about 33 by, let's put here more or less how much they want, by 25. So, you know, I create my model more or less what I need to. And once I have that, uh, it makes it very easy to continue my design. So the first thing I do is I'm going to export this as an OBJ. An OBJ, it's a format that ZBrush would read easily. So what I do is I select the model and I'm going to put export and let's call it something cool. Z B Rhino. C Brino. C Brino tutor tutorial one. Okay. And what I'm going to do is down here, I'm going to look for the type. So I'm going to look for OBJ. Once I have that, I'm going to put save because I want to export it there. And it's going to bring this menu here and just leave it as polygon meshes and just leave it. If you have multiple pieces, I would recommend you to export them individually. But for this case, I'm only going to use one model. So I'm just going to put OK. And then I go here. Now, you don't need to have like huge resolution, but I would recommend you do something like this. This is like my go to resolution for STLs because it's high enough, but low enough where the file is not too big. So I'm just going to click OK. So once I export it, then I already know the measurements that I need my ring to be. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into ZBrush and I'm going to import that model in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Simple Brush and I'm just going to put a sphere and I'm going to create it. Okay. And I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to adjust it right where I need to. Okay. So once I have that, now I can change and load my tool or import it. So I'm going to go to import and I'm going to go to wherever I have my file, CB Rhino, double click on it and just put yes. And yes, okay, look, there it is. We're not done yet, okay? So this is where we can start modifying the piece. Uh, I recommend you have a Wacom uh, if you can but this is the way I have it. So now let me grab my Wacom and let me start playing with this. This is great, but look what happens if I try to modify it. Now I'm gonna hit X and I can modify both sides. I can start doing whatever I need to do, right? And it looks great, you know, pretty good geometry, but look what happens if I put geometry and I subdivide. Oh, something happens that um, it's it, it makes these mistakes on the piece. So we wanna avoid that. So let me go control C, C, Z, Z, Z until I have my initial model. There it is. So how are we going to fix that? So the first thing you do is you're going to go to sub tool and, uh, and sub tools, and you're going to go to this area right here that it says, uh, remesh. And the first thing I do is I'm going to take off any of this axis. I don't want to have X or Y or Z axis. I just wanted to remesh as a stays. And then my resolution, you should I go by 720 and my polish, I go about 75%. That's a lot, but usually that's the way. Let's go with 70%. Okay. Now, when you have that, all you have to do is press remesh and I click on it and it's going to create a new object, but it's already remeshed and it's easier to work with. So let's wait for it. There it is. Now, if I go in my sub tool, I have two items. So if I click on the second one and I hide the first one, look at this now. It's a lot easier to modify this with ZBrush. I'm going to click X. And now if I pick a different sub tool, my favorite is a uh, clay buildup. Now, if I do this and I subdivide, let me go to my subdivision geometry. 
and I put divide, I don't get that problem anymore. Look, it's perfect. One thing I always do with a piece like this, because it's got a lot of uh, crazy edges and stuff, I like to smooth it. So I'm gonna increase my drawing size and I'm just gonna hold shift and smooth it all out. Just nice and even. Whoopsie. So once it's nice and smooth, or well, at least the area that I want to, it makes it a lot easier to work with. Now what you need to do is put the pictures or your reference pictures to start sculpting this piece. And I'm gonna show you the fastest way to put them in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go right here on the top and I'm gonna go right here to, where's my brushes? Okay, so I'm gonna put a sub tool and I'm gonna append a model in there or a, sort of a, uh, another tool in here. So I'm gonna append a tool. So what it's gonna do is gonna add one here on this side. So, okay, so let's go append. And I'm gonna use this, where is it? Um, plane 3D. And we're gonna put our picture here. So let me show you. So I put the plane. If I move the piece, there it is. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load a picture so I can use later to put in that box. So I'm gonna go to texture and I'm gonna put import picture. So let's go to this one here, okay? And then I'm gonna load another one for the other view. So I'm gonna go again to texture and I'm gonna import the second one. Let's use one that is pretty good. Let's use this one, okay? So right here in my texture, I got my two images that I'm gonna use, okay? It's not the same one, but at least let me use those. Okay, so once I have this one, I select on it. Let me change the color of this because I like the white better. Um, now I'm gonna go down here where it says texture. Make sure you select the plane where you want the picture first. Okay, I'm here and I'm gonna delete everything else. Not delete, but hide. Okay, sub tool. And let's go to texture now, texture map. And here's when I'm gonna load it. So I'm gonna click in here and it's gonna ask me what picture you wanna load in there. So I want this one. Boom, there it is. It's upside down, so I'm gonna fix it. So let's go back to texture, hit the piece, and I'm gonna flip it this way. And it should fix the model now. Texture, and I'm gonna load it again. And there it is. Um, also, the other way that you can do this, um, let me go Control Z, um, is that once you have your box selected, you can hit move. And right here, I can just flip it 180 degrees. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make it a little bit more to the actual size of the piece. This one's stretched out, so I like it there. So I'm gonna modify it just a little bit so it's a little bit more real. Cause it's gonna shrink it to whatever that square is. So just make sure that you modify until it's done right. Okay, so once I have that, I go back to draw and now I'm gonna do the other piece. So what I'm gonna do, it's let's go to sub tool. Let's append another uh, plane 3D, append, there you are. So here it is, let's hide that one. And now I'm gonna load that other picture in here. So let's go sub tool down, let's go to texture map and I'm gonna select the other picture. So there it is. How do I fix it? I go to move and I'm gonna use it in this direction. I hold shift so it snaps at 180 degrees now I'm gonna snap here, put it here where it snaps, and I'm gonna turn it about 90 degrees in that direction. And it's there now. So let's see, let's turn on both sub tools. Kind of there they are. Let's go to draw, so I don't modify them too much. I still need to fix it a little bit because these are not matching. So when I'm gonna go to move and I'm gonna stretch it, oh, not that one. Well, this one I can make a little bit smaller kind of where the match, let me put it up and go down a little bit. That seems a little bit better. Okay, so uh, let's move this, can I, maybe there, it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, so this is the fastest way to do it. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this picture, um, the front side, I'm gonna move it back a little bit. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna move it further. Well, I'm 
gonna go here and I'm just gonna move it back a little bit and now I got to put my ring in such a way that I can sculpt it out so I'm gonna go to my last piece that I made and look it's not in the right position so let's turn this one on so now I'm gonna move this ring to kind of match what I'm trying to do so I'm gonna go here until the 90 degrees there it is and let's see well that's good enough okay so now what I gotta do is I, I gotta fix this let me zoom in a little bit move it here and I'm gonna go right here where it says transform and I'm gonna make it transparent just so I can see where I want that picture I'm gonna make sure I'm selected that piece and I'm just gonna move it forward where I need to have it so let me put it around here this is more or less where I need to now I'm going to flip it to this side and I'm going to select that frontal piece and right there is pretty good. I'm going to try to sculpt from here and uh, what I can do is I create another piece but this is the one I'm going to use to sculpt this ring. I'm going to lower it just a little bit. I'm going to go down here and well I need to make it slightly bigger so what I'm going to do I'm going to go here make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and I got to fix that with the other picture. So I'm going to go here now. I'm going to have that one on as well. Make sure they match. Let me take out transform and let me take transparency off so I can have both of them. And what I can do is I can select this piece, just move it forward a little bit so it kind of matches the other picture. see how much more do I need to put it just so I can match them let me turn off the ring and what I need to do now is I need to make it not that one that was the one I'm using here I'm gonna hit the other orange square and I'm gonna try to match it okay I'm gonna drag it down a little bit so right there is most likely that looks pretty good so this is matching here and this is matching right in there. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now what I can do is I can grab this one and put it back again where it was. And I can just put it all the way back here. Turn on the piece that I'm using. Oh, let's go in there, turn it on. And if I go to transform and I put transparent, there it is. I can work in a, on the piece now and that makes it very easy to sculpt now. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sculpt the piece using this frame already and I'm not going to go super in detail with it, but I'm just going to get enough form so then I can start detailing the way I want this piece to be. It's just an example, okay? So let's get on it.
All right, friends, so what I have here, it's kind of like in between. I already got it started. And what I can show you here is here's the skull. Here's the first picture. It doesn't really match, but at least it gives you an idea how to get a detail. Um, at least for that, I have the two reference. And if I turn them off, you can see my models there. It's, it's starting to get shape. Um, if I go in here, I can see that shape and that it's the model let me go to draw and just show you real quick let me turn that off so this is the way it's turning out it's not too bad i have the jawline coming in and i already started sculpturing a little bit of what the eyes i want them to look like and i gotta work a little bit more on the facial features but so far it's really good i think what's throwing me off is this area here that i really need to work to make a look more like a skull so what, what you can do is just grab it here and just go on that one, turn it on and go to my move tool, make it a little bit bigger and just start tweaking it where it looks a little bit more like an actual skull. Uh, right there. And this would definitely help me get the egg cross even better. So that's much better right there turn this off I got my skull see now it's starting to look I can work on the teeth here if I want to detail it I got the jawline or if I just want to look like kind of mysterious this works as well I hope that today's video was helpful to you if you have a comment you can do it in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to the channel especially like this video so this video is pushed to more creators like yourself don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you have a question, just put it in the comment section below. If you're really serious about taking your designing to the next level and you need help, in the description below there's a link where you can contact me for private lessons or consulting. That's it for today friends, I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!